Remember this. Even the most beloved of Hollywood treasures run the risk of disappearing, which is where movie-loving collectors of memorabilia come in. Our cover story is reported now by Ben Tracy. Tap your heels together three times. Dorothy's sparkling slippers are perhaps the most unforgettable footwear in movie history. There's no place like home. Yet the only place they called home after the 1939 film wrapped was a dingy storage room on the MGM studio lot. The studios looked at the stuff like junk. James Commissar is one of the foremost collectors of Hollywood's history. His archive fills a massive warehouse in Los Angeles. His treasures, once considered studio trash. They didn't want to store it. They wanted to get it off the books. So oftentimes they would sell it in the parking lot to the cast and crew members, or they would just throw it away. $70, bit, 70, bit, 70. In 1970, MGM held the first large studio auction. The legendary movie factory was struggling and selling off its famed back lot to developers. All of the fine antique furnishings, art goods, chandeliers. Everything from tanks to classic cars to Ben-Hur chariots went on the auction block. One of several sets of Dorothy's ruby slippers sold for $15,000. That pair was later donated to the Smithsonian. We are going to save some of the things. Hollywood legend Debbie Reynolds bought many of the items at the MGM sale and others over the years. Hers was considered the finest collection ever assembled. This is Singing in the Rain. and She gave me a preview in 2011 as she got ready to sell it to pay off debt. There was Julie Andrews' dress and guitar from The Sound of Music. We Audrey Hepburn's hat, costume so. from My Fair Lady. Oh, did you feel the breeze from the subway? And a more airy article of clothing from the Seven Year Itch. This is one of the iconic dresses in all of <laughs> film history. I think it is, especially for Marilyn. All told, Reynolds' sale brought in $26 million. Why did you start collecting all of this? You know, it was mostly emotional. I couldn't believe that they would getting rid of all these iconic pieces that I consider to be uh, historical and should be saved. Reynolds was ahead of her time. Now a lot of people want a piece of Hollywood's past. And the reason I think these items appeal to so many people is that it's a deeply personal, emotional connection to a film. Laura Woolley is one of the top appraisers in Hollywood. This was on the shelf in the chocolate shop? Yep, it's a prop candy bar. So. She says new items are being found in basements and boxes every year. Most of them are there only because some of the costumers kind of set some things aside because they thought, you know, Humphrey Bogart wore this. Maybe we shouldn't put it back in the rack under men's size 38 jackets for someone else. Are the studios approaching this differently today? I mean, is there someone on the set of Harry Potter collecting wands and saying these things will be worth money someday? You bet your life. They are very much on top of it these days. They are, I, I think that many of the studios have absolutely learned their lesson. Um, they see the treasures that got away. What is it? Treasures such as the Maltese Falcon from the classic 1941 film. The, uh... Stuff that dreams are made of. The statue was sold in 2013 by a retired Beverly Hills dentist who had owned it since the 1980s. Catherine Williamson is director of entertainment memorabilia at Bonham's Auction House. They've partnered with Turner Classic Movies for auctions that had brought in $15 million. When we sold the Maltese Falcon a couple of years ago, we noticed that a lot of the people who were really interested in the piece were contemporary art collectors. That they were they were looking at it more as a piece of sculpture than as that also happened to be a relic from this incredible film that they all knew and loved. In fact, the Falcons buyer is known more for buying Picassos. Casino mogul Steve Wynn paid more than four million dollars to land the Maltese Falcon. Play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. You must remember this. Last year, the piano Sam played again and again in Casablanca sold for more than $3 million, as did a costume of a certain lion best known for his lack of courage. I brought in Irina. The seller of that costume was James Commissar. He found the lion in 1995 when he placed a want ad for Hollywood memorabilia in the newspaper. One day, his phone rang. I didn't call this guy back for a number of months, but he kept calling me, and I went out to see it, 
And he had this real lion laying on his conference room table. It was made out of a real lion. The costume matched like a fingerprint because it was a real lion hide. Every birthmark and hair swirl and scar lined up perfectly. But the lion was in awful shape. So Commissar hired two art conservators, Irina Kalinescu and Kara Varnell. It took them two years to bring the cowardly creature back to life. It's one of those pieces that was really important to do. You know, sometimes you work on things, it's like, ah, I've done 20 of these. How many more can be interesting? Eh. But the cowardly lion has a special place in everybody's heart, so. And we great. grew very fond of him yeah, very <laughs> during <fond>. the process. <laughs> Commissar sold the costume because he needed the money to fund his growing collection of television memorabilia. This is Adam West's Batman costume, Captain Kirk from the first season of Star Trek. Lucille Ball's polka dotted dress, Pamela Anderson's swimsuit from Baywatch. It's faded here. Kara Varnell the helped him restore ball. George Reeves' Superman He's sweater, and Irene Kalinescu worked on the signpost made famous on MASH. It had been rotting in a garage in Phoenix for 20 years. It's so amazing to think that with this tiny little, tiny spatula, like a half an inch, she would adhere every little chip of paint back on. Oh, look at this. Commissar is planning on turning his 10,000-piece collection into a television museum. You love this stuff. Oh, my God. You're like God. a total TV geek about this. I am a foaming fanboy like you wouldn't believe. And this is Hello, Dolly. It's Debbie Reynolds also wanted a museum for her collection. She could never find enough support in Hollywood to build it, and her pieces are now scattered across the world. Some in Hollywood say that's unfortunate, given that the Motion Picture Academy is about to turn this corner in Los Angeles into a $300 million museum. Follow the yellow brick road. Which brings us back to the Ruby Slippers. Actor Leonardo DiCaprio and director Steven Spielberg led a group of investors that recently bought another pair of the shoes used in the movie for an undisclosed amount of money. They donated them to the Academy, where they are now finally back home. Do you think 100 years from now people will still be talking about a pair of Ruby Slippers? Absolutely. I'd be really sad to think of a world where we wouldn't be. There's no place like home. Who's not going to know what that means in 100 years? I hope that's not the case, because I think, again, that would be a very sad place to be.